action. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Beyond the Summit. We're here Dyer with Star Team Ladder Bars. Season 8, Day 4, back underway after Radiant our Thanksgiving Team break Bars. slash dream hack break, depending on where you are Dyer in the world. I'm Zayori. With me again is going to be Morlini, and we've got our first match underway. We're in the draft. We can get straight into it here. We do have Next KZ facing off against Flipside. Are you? Merlini, my friend, how are you this morning? Ten Hello. Remaining. Hey, Hi, Zuri. Hey, buddy. How are you? Let me turn on my Dota TV Five mic before remaining. I forget. All right. All right. Awesome. So we've got five matches coming up today. First of which going to be Flipside RU versus Next KZ. I think we got to see both these teams before our break. But I'll be honest, my memory is not serving me right now as to how they fared on day three. But any uh, initial thoughts here coming into this draft? Uh, yeah, I think Next KZ have been doing pretty well lately. Wadafaka has just been snowballing as their solo mid. I think he went like 9-0 and zero on the OD the other day, oh, and yeah, I yeah. saw a Storm Spirit, and he was just crushing people. Really? Next KZ, the favorites here, 70-30. Flip side, they're a newer team. I think they're coached by Mania, but they're still uh, working out some of their teamwork, some of their draft. It's just, uh, they're a little bit of a weaker team, but they definitely have the potential. Yeah. Yeah, on their official roster here, I think they only have two matches in the archive, which are both losses. So not a lot of data to work with in terms of uh, th these guys as a five-man roster. So you're absolutely right about that. We'll see how they uh, how they draft here. I imagine they're going to want to ban around that midsection a little bit because, as you mentioned, Wadafaka has been really playing quite well over the past uh, initial days of Star Ladder, at least. We'll see how that affects the drafts here. Ban's already underway. We can go ahead and take a look. Flipside going to take out Elder Titan and Pugna with their first two bans. Next League going to take out the Lich as well as the Timber. Saw. Of course, going to open up for a first pick clockwork here, and the array of scary heroes still in the pool. I imagine Visage may be one of the heroes that Next League want to grab right here, pending how they want that uh, draft to unfold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, clockwork, first pick, no big surprise there. Um, yeah. Silver really early in the draft, nothing too much to talk about. Um, have you seen much of Flipside? I, I don't even know how old of a team they are. They're not very old. I, I almost, I, I kind of want to pull them up on Dat Dota right now and, and see what they have going on. But I think it's only a couple of matches since they've technically just been formed, um, not not that long ago. So I, mm -hmm. other than what we saw on the stream, um, I, I guess on day three is is about the extent of my knowledge here. And there's going to be that visage first pick from next league. And they're going to grab a Crystal Maiden, so they're going to take care of their supports Dying again. Team. Nothing uh, <laughs> nothing too notable at this point. The Timbersaw first ban is a little bit interesting. I mean, we've seen him uh, have a bit of a showing as, as of late, but first ban material, um, not something we've seen quite as much. I think the hero sometimes is a first ban. I guess it depends on who you're playing versus. Maybe they've done some scouting out on uh, flip side, but Timbersaw I still think is a really strong hero. Yeah. No, no doubt about that. Another one of those heroes that can sort of play that uh, that versatile role in terms of going in the mid lane, going in that off lane, a lot of different things you can do with him, to, to some degree at least. Venomancer going to be that second pick for flip, si flip side. Everything still looking pretty standard here. Veno Clockwork, uh, I don't know, almost the two, two most sought after heroes in the pool right now, as uh, data would point to at least. Venomancer and Clockwork have just been so valuable. We spent a lot of time talking about Veno in the, the last draft. I think we're both on the same page in terms of uh, maybe Veno a little overvalued right now but still a very uh, prevalent pick nonetheless the flip side gonna start banning out uh, a couple of those mid heroes at least od gonna be taken out of the pool as will the mighty weaver next league gonna ban out abaddon we'll see what they want to do with their fourth ban but uh, not surprised to see that od banned out against uh what a fuck as we mentioned yeah they've done their research on him i have no idea where this abaddon um ban came from i'm gonna check flip side's recent games and see if i can get any info on what their Playstyle is it seems to be just like like most of the other CIS teams nothing unusual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean that sort of uh, hefty aggression at least to some degree they tend to pick those sort of rosters. Um, I'm really embarrassed my memory is not serving me right now. We did just cast them not that long ago, but I tried to pull them up on Dat Dota and didn't find anything under flip side, so it's <laughs> not a good sign either. They may be mislabeled. Um, they played versus Poseidon and lost. They played versus Empire and lost. 
Okay. And Two rough matches, though. Those are tough. Yeah, th- those are not easy. Um, looks like they used Timbersaw in both of those games. Um, I did not see any Abaddon, though. Mm, okay. I mean, some teams just don't like the, the Abaddon. He can be a little bit irritating to deal with. He works well against certain heroes, especially uh, with that cleanse. I don't know, maybe against Veno. Yeah, could could have been an option, but they already have their supports, so I guess not. I should have <laughs> thought about that before I opened my mouth. Viper going to be that fourth band from next league, and Viper, one of those heroes we've talked about a little bit, uh, and he's interesting because he hasn't really been picked very much, but he's been banned in nearly every Star Ladder match that you and I have been able to cast together. That hero is just boring. Whew. Yeah, I'm not complaining too much, but the CIS teams the seem to be um, pretty unanimously obliged to just ban him out and not too eager to pick him. <laughs> but uh, Storm yeah. Spirit going to be picked uh, third picked here. For uh, presumably Wadafunka. Now, picking your mid this in the draft, is there anything that makes you nervous? Could Flipside pull out kind of a hard counter here to the Storm Spirit in the mid lane? It depends on how flexible their uh, mid player is. Um, generally, like picking up a Storm this early is not that great of a choice. Um, I think like something like Lifesteal would have been a lot better for Radiant next um, if they wanted to pick it up third pick. But yeah, just you can just get any sort of silence. Um, Puck is pretty good. Any wielder of Orchid is pretty good. Like you can oh even pick God. a Clinks for flip side. Um, you can go, I don't know, a fair amount of matchups. I think Queen of Pain does decent in Restorm Spirit too. But again, it is a pretty skill dependent matchup. At least most of them are. 10 seconds remaining. And looks like they banned out most of the like anti-storm to like od just kind of crushes storm so does viper so they always like to ban around Wadafaka. yeah yeah absolutely so as you mentioned life stealer uh, a possible pick here and ends up being the third pick for flip side again no no big surprise everything that flip side has done so far just completely standard all three of their heroes um <laughs> have been so popular they really need no introduction and uh, all work pretty well together. Well, that life story, they're probably going to want to pair him with somebody pretty mobile. I mean, a, a Puck could be a, a possibility here. It does pair quite nicely with that life stealer. Any thoughts about uh, Puck versus Storm Spirit in a 1v1 matchup if they do opt for the Puck? I think this is fairly even. Um, I think that it you have to farm a really fast blink with Puck if you want to keep the Storm down. And on the flip side, if Storm Spirit gets an Orchid, he will crush the Puck. So Puck they'll just like free farm and lane and then you really have to make use of that like 10 to 20 minute phase of the game or storm spirit is just gonna keep working you over and over and over mm -hmm. and you are just gonna feed so um i think with the use of life stealer bombs they can potentially keep the storm spirit down next case he doesn't have any anti life stealer which is really concerning sometimes uh, you can get like a vi Visage Medallion and burst them down with physical damage. Storm Spirit with Orchid is also pretty good. But as it stands right now, they don't really have that much to deal with them. Yeah, uh, exactly. I mean, you need Lockdown, you need stuff that can go through Rage. Bane is kind of the go-to in terms of a Life Stealer counter, but unfortunately they lock themselves in with that Visage Crystal Maiden first and uh, second pick, respectively, there. But alas, Puck was picked up, so we are going to see a Puck versus Storm Spirit mid in the mid lane, most likely. And I mean, what can Next League grab here to try and deal with that Life Stealer with their last pick? As I mentioned, Bane off the table. I, I guess they could try to grab Razor, but I don't think he's going to fit into this roster very well. Uh, they really need an yeah, offlaner here. Just get kited, I yeah. think. So, I mean, uh, where mm. Mm, there's not too many good anti life stealer, I think they need something ranged, uh, first of all. Um, I mean, could something like see. a Furion just for some rat dota split push kind of a, a strategy work here, or is that that too? Risky? I think so, but that's not really next KZ's play style, so I don't think they're gonna pick it up. I think that some teams would go for it, but not next KZ. Yeah, um. I'm trying to think of what carry they would use though. Well, yeah, life uh, Razor would just get kited pretty hard, I think, with um, Cogs, with Venom, Play Gourds, and with Puck, and he's just not going to have that easy of a time. He just ha pretty much has to farm up BKB before anything else, yeah. um, and is still pretty susceptible to the Puck bombs. Any other carries that come to mind? They could try something crazy like an Ursa here, the only bear that can stand toe to toe with the Life Stealer. Oh yeah, that would be awesome. I think he's going to I think melees are just going to get kind of melees generally have a pretty difficult time versus a venomancer. Yeah, that's true. BKB or non. I mean, maybe lone lone druid, I guess he sort of does okay against life stealer. He would fit into the next league roster. They I don't, well. think, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> no one no one likes picking picking life stealer or picking lone druid versus life stealer and no, that okay. it's just a 
mm, it's just a really strange matchup because you can root him, but he can just life steal you. I think generally life stealer wins out though. Yeah. And Silver has fallen off a lot lately. So oh, the Doom. Doom. How did we forget about yeah. Doom? Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, Doom would have been pretty good. Um, yeah, nice ban from Flipside. There it is, the okay. Lone Druid! Whoa. Okay, I will eat my words. Wow, I'm surprised. After you said it, I was like, yeah, actually, you're right. I can't really think of a time I've seen a Lone Druid just steamroll over a Life Stealer. So this is going to be interesting. Yeah, it is really rare that it actually works out like that. And most of the time I, I've seen it, it's just Life Stealer just eats away at the bear. And even with, like... Mm, two or three thousand gold lead for the lone druid he still can't really effectively shut down a life stealer especially when there's nothing really else to lock him down um in yeah. the next in next kz's lineup so i actually have to give even before the last pick comes out i think that um flip side has the better draft yeah and the bane to top it off i i absolutely agree with you my friend i, I like this flip side roster just a little bit better it seems a little more well-rounded as well you see the synergy between the puck and the life stealer clockwork and venno two very sought after picks bane just a great all-around support some good lockdown some good anti-carry next league if pretty solid heroes but i don't see that same level of team cohesion and i think their lack of crowd control is going to serve as uh, kind of the biggest bane to their uh, their existence in this match but We'll see. Still plenty of hope uh, with what a fucker on that Storm Spirit. Um, I don't know. I think there's always hope for Next KZ. That is one of his signature heroes, if I'm not mistaken. And um, He's had a tendency to kind of snowball out of control, especially in the last few games, so we'll see if he keeps it up. But uh, alas, we are going to get into our first match of the day. We do have five games coming up today, guys, on Star Ladder Season 8. So uh, plenty matches uh, after this one. We are actually going to see Fnatic as well today, uh, Merlini. I think it's Fnatic versus VP in our, our final match, so that should be uh, pretty exciting as well. So, all right, let's introduce our rosters here. I'll take the dire side, and uh, that is going to be flip side. Are you in the bottom lane? We've got Enlight playing on the Life Steal. We're going to be in a duo lane with Wicked Sick on that Venomancer. Right now in the mid, it is Heart on Puck. Uh, there is Book on the Bane. Looks like he may be rotating down to that bottom lane for a bit of tri-lane action, and it's going to be a Hala Dance on the clockwork in the solo safe lane. Now on our Radiant side, we do have Team Next KZ, uh, amazing, gonna be playing on the Crystal Maiden in the bottom lane. Reeves gonna be supporting right alongside him there on the Visage. In the mid lane, Watafaka gonna be playing on the Storm Spirit. They will be supporting, is this gonna be a, a tri-lane Lone Druid? Equal on the Lone Druid, headed down to the bottom lane. And last but not least, we do have Mantis on the Marana, who is stationed about the top lane for a bit of long lane Marana action. So, um, hmm, tri-lane Lone Druid, not something we see all too often. Not something that we see often at all, and yeah, I I guess it's going to be okay. I, I don't really see this lane going too poorly for either side in the bottom lane. On top lane, we have Clockwork versus Potom. Potom should not die. Just keep track of your mana, maybe get a magic stick, and so if you happen to get cogged in, just sleep out, so I don't think we'll see too much action there. Mid lane, Storm Spirit versus Puck, a fairly even matchup, I'd say. Looks like both of them did get pulled. A little bit of regeneration, mm -hmm. and that's fairly skill-dependent too, but I don't think that Puck should die in this matchup either. Neither should Storm. Yeah, I mean, Puck does have a very small range advantage. Uh, Storm Spirit is at uh, 480, Puck at 550. Okay. Very, very minor, but still just one of those little tiny edges. Um, that it may be worth mentioning here. It is not going to be a tri lane in the bottom. Equal going to be all solo and already he's going to be in big trouble. He's going to put in the nightmare. Gale going to connect very easily there and Light going to go straight into him. And I think Equal may concede the first blood right here. He's going to be hard pressed to do anything else. Down he goes. Lifesteal are going to grab the last hit. Oh man, already next KZ off to a rough start here, Merlini. They're going to rotate that tri-lane up top to support the Marana against the solo clockwork. I'm not so sure about that call. I mean, maybe they're going to try and set up a kill on the clockwork here. But um, as you mentioned, Marana should be fine in a solo lane here. It's going to be that lone druid who needs the help. Yeah, lone druid, I have no idea why they would pair him in that 1v3 matchup. And at least scout out the lane. Their supports were, were down there to begin with. But they really do have to secure lone druid's farm or else he is going to be a liability. Like, even with a gold advantage on life stealer, life stealer is going to win. And with a gold disadvantage, life stealer is certainly going to win. Yeah. And as we mentioned, grabbing that bonus bit of first blood gold, something we talked about on day three a little bit. Should supports grab it? Should uh, carries grab it? And here, and needless to say, a carry grabbing it, and he's off to one hell of a start. 1.2k on the net worth chart as Lone Druid. It might dive. Yeah, dive tries to make some recovery. Up in the top here, I think you're exactly right, my friend. A hollow dance going to be in a little bit of trouble. He is level two. Burns the cogs right away. Has rocket flare. It is stuck on cooldown at the moment. He's going to try to fish his way into the trees here. Mantis on that Marana actually taking a lot of damage. I don't think he's going to fall, but... A failed gank in the top lane. Double whammy here for next KZ. A lot of resources used for that gank. And Ahala Dance 
Actually, not that much worse for wear. He's gonna suck up a couple of tangos and still be at full health. Mm-hmm. And looks like they actually have blocked the spawn after uh, Lone Druid pulled one. He is level three right now, so he's not doing terribly. Looks like Waterfucker is in a lot of trouble. He will get his bottle, um, but still there is an Invis Bane and a Venomancer hiding around. I don't know if he scouts it out, but he m should probably sense that something is amiss because Enlight is alone on bottom. Yep, and he's got no vision here. Book gonna initiate with that nightmare. Gale gonna connect nice and easily. Hark gonna come in. And I think what a fuck it gonna be in big trouble. Nothing he can do. That slow from Venomancer so potent. But oh, oh the nice visage gonna come in. Yeah, that phase shift, beautiful from Hart. That's gonna keep him alive. He's gonna sip up that bottle and he will make it back to friendly territory. Now gonna be two to nil here. Flipside are you way ahead? And even before that gang, Storm Spirit struggling so much in this mid lane. Puck 14 and 5 in last hits, and Storm Spirit only. 7-1, and one. gonna get a couple of free last hits here while Puck uh, roams about. Uh, they did use a smoke, but still, Storm Spirit really falling behind. Yeah, Flipside's doing really, really well in this early game. They've secured farm for the Lifestealer. They shut down the Lone Druid as well as the Storm Spirit, and Clockwork hasn't died. So they're winning all three lanes right now, and the pressure is really on XKZ to try and make something happen. Looks like their smoke will get revealed equal, will get scouted out, but looks like he will not die. So a little bit of uh, things going in the way of favor of NextKZ. About a thousand gold lead for Flipside right now, and Wadafaka playing very aggressively on the puck in the middle. Yep, trying to do what he can here. He is, uh, oh, I, was gonna say, I thought he was a level behind, but no, that experience gap. Not quite as large as I thought. I guess that hero kill split three ways isn't really all that much experience, but equal is just beyond struggling right here. I mean, look at his creep score. He's one and one in last hits. This lone druid has literally nothing. The supports are almost more farmed than he is. Um, th this is just this is just scary. I mean, what do you do here? Is next KZ? Do you call a lane rotation? Do you try and pull this lone druid up in the top so we can farm against the clockwork? I, I mean, what do you do here? Because if the if next KZ keeps going forward at this current pace, we're off to a short match here for game number one, I think. You can probably get like level six on Storm Spirit, and then uh, we may see an engagement in mid. Yep, and oh no, what a fuck. I think he could get an easy kill onto Hart. Hart gonna sip up that bottle, compliments of the high ground, and uh, that wasn't he's gonna even be able to close. turn it around. Like, he had a Ooh. good 150 HP at the end. Yeah, that was uh, rough. It looked like what a fuck I might be able to do it, but he got almost two full bottle charges off, so Puck got plenty of mana back, and that illusory orb, man, level three, level five. It hurts, does a good bit of damage, so uh, and gonna be three to nil here as we approach that five minute mark. Tri lane continuing on in the bottom lane. Life Stealer still leading the way in terms of net worth. 2.6k at the top of the charts. Marana doing okay. Really the only one farming on next KZ right now. Lone Druid making a, a small recovery down here as he starts to rack up a couple of last hits. But Marana at least kind of par for the course right now in that third position going toe to toe with the puck. We'll see. I mean, Marana, not the hardest of carries, especially against a life stealer. It looks like next KZ are going to pull those supports out from the top and rotate back down to the bottom to give equal a little bit of love. He is level 5 now, so at least getting a bit of experience, but still. Small victories here amongst an array of uh, defeats. <laughs> looks like we could see some initiation here in the jungle. Flipside going to catch wind of next KZ rotating their supports. Ward going to scout it out, and they're going to find the Crystal Maiden. This should be an easy kill. Gale does connect, but no, the Venomancer gets turned around on first. Visage going to drop the hammer and do a good bit of damage. That's going to make it a one for one. The Venom for Crystal Maiden. Now Flipside going to be in retreat mode, but uh-oh, what a fuck. I'm going to rotate down from the mid lane. They're going to grab a kill on the Bane, it looks like here. One last nuke from Visage. That is going to be a double kill coming out for Reeves on the Flying Bird. A nice pick-me-up for Next KZ right there, but still two to four here at the six-minute mark. Unfortunately, they don't get a free engage that does cost them their Crystal Maiden. Yeah, very nice denied, though, by the Visage there. So they turned that around pretty nicely. Uh, one thing that happened for Flipside is their, exp uh, their Observer Ward just expired. They saw the two supports, and they went over there, but they actually didn't retain vision of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, not having vision during nighttime is pretty rough, especially when you're going behind the T1 tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. A nice heads-up play from what a fuck as well to move out of the lane and be there to add that extra bit of damage to finish off those kills. Of course, he is only level 5, no ball lightning, so um, that was, uh, well, well, good positioning right there. As soon as he saw Trickery was afoot, did make that rotation and got there just in the He's nick of time. He's about to die, too, in a fast bomb, though. He is going to hit level uh -oh. 6. Uh, what level is silence? Is level 1 silence, but... Yep. 
He does ding level six. There's the infest bomb. Illusory or to initiate the very sl uh, short silence. And uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to grab this kill. The disable onto the life sealer. He's going to hop forward. You're going to try to go toe to toe with him. That's going to be enough for the kill. Crystal Maiden going to come in and will actually grab the last hit with uh, the Crystal Nova. And oh, Puck going to be able wow, to finish off the Storm Spirit. He could have dodged that. He could have yeah. just went right. I, I mean, he had full vision of that. But he did get the life sealer kill, which is pretty big. And that was just so untimely by Flipside. They wanted to kill him when he was still level five, but the last creep that he yeah. oh this chicken oh Any chicken oh almost not quite luckily it had the speed boost but yeah you're exactly right trying to grab him before level six of course uh, that is the mark when storm spirit becomes significantly more difficult to lock down and uh, just slightly off the mark bit of bad rng right there Sleep but still reefs. at least make it a one for one yeah exactly right the nightmare gale combo gonna connect again moonlight shadow is used that will buy next kz a little bit of time here they may try and turn it around perhaps the radiant courier does get taken out they're gonna turn it on to the bane bane gonna fall but now we see the clockwork in the mix and i think this lone druid gonna be in a little bit of trouble moonlight shadow gonna expire in just a couple of seconds here are they gonna get the vision they need perhaps not the bear is gonna pay the ultimate price whoa nice ward block right there tower gonna get a couple of shots off and the bear is gonna fall will actually get denied by reeves though very nicely played gonna deny that extra bit of bonus how much is the bear is it, is it a 300 bounty jeez yeah. nice deny right there from the bird so well played next kz showing us they have a sign of life on that net worth chart not looking quite so scary as it once was gold graph just about zeroed out and experience graph now actually rotating the way of next kz as it is five to four here at the eight minute mark and marana actually now number one on the net worth chart not by much but number one nonetheless they need to work on their chicken micro this almost died three <laughs> times once right here once on the bottom engage where um one of the heroes got denied, CM got denied, and then it just died right here too. And that, that is just a little bit too much gold uh, giving the way of the opponent's Radiant's team. And it looks like Watafaka almost gets caught out um, by Aloha. And now that Puck has got finally gotten some levels, level two silence, level three, level four, uh, Storm is going to be in a lot of trouble. I think he might have to rush BKB at this point just so he doesn't die to the Puck constantly. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's still, I guess Puck's not really that farmed. Uh, he only has 400 gold on top of his treads, but still, if Wadafaka goes to Orchid right now, he's gonna it's, it's gonna be a very very late Orchid, and Puck can get his blink much much faster than he can get his Orchid. Yep. I think you're definitely right about that. Just glancing at the net worth, I mean, Puck is about 50% ahead of him. We are going to see initiation in the top lane, though. Bane going to get caught out as what a fucking now. Uh, past that level 6 mark, he's actually level 7, does have that mobility. Four points in overload, and that's going to make for a pretty easy kill in the top lane to level it out here as we start to approach the 10-minute mark again. A nice pick-me-up for next KZ. The Lone Druid also starting to get a little bit of momentum here. He's now only 800 gold shy of where that life stealer is at on net worth. He is level seven, and in terms of item choices, hasn't picked up anything yet, about 2,400 in the bank. I, have ima I imagine he's gonna be pulling up for that Radiance, but time will tell. In the top lane here, Venomancer gonna be in a bit of trouble. Again, gonna get caught out. Sort of, sort of a same situation as that Bane. Once he gets initiated on by the Marana and the Storm Spirit, not much that he can do. Whoa, in the mid lane, Visage gonna get taken out. The rest of the fight gonna continue on as Clockwork does fall. It's gonna be a one for one for now. Puck gonna get caught in some entangles. Oh man, lucky, lucky bear action right there as Puck gets caught in a terrible spot. Freezing Field comes out and that is gonna be a one for two in favor of Next KZ. Puck and Clockwork in exchange for just the support Visage. Lone Druid has caught up quite nicely as you talked about. He has 2,700 gold. I'm surprised he didn't go for much. Okay, it looks like we're back. I have no idea what just happened, folks. I don't know if that was just an internet hiccup or uh, if the something else happened. You're trying to oh, no. Is currently unavailable. Although, I don't know if that was me or just everyone, but, um, oh, no. So, yeah, we're back in this game, folks. I'm sorry, we're having some serious technical difficulties here. We are at least encoding frames again, and I'm going to cast this match and try and get Merlini back on ASAP. What a fuck, uh, kind of overcommitting up here in the top. I kind of missed the last bit of action as well as I was toggling the stream. And, uh, yeah, what a fuck, uh, just on a suicide mission here. Let's see if we can get Merlini back with us. The person whom you're trying to reach is currently on a... Hmm. All right, I'm going to reset my Skype. And continue casting here after I uh, give give that a go. So my apologies, folks. I'm really not sure what that was. I imagine it was on my end since all of my stuff dropped simultaneously. But it seemed to be just a hiccup, not dropping any frames here. Again, really sorry about that. I don't know why Merlini can't come back, but uh, we're going to get him back on the call as quickly as possible. Do -do 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 -do. I know. Chat's exploding. Chat's exploding to push it and take it out. Um, frames dropped. I think it's a Skype issue, man. I think Skype is tanking my internet. I'm getting frame drops as soon as I open Skype. Yes. Silence. Stay near. Me too. 
Oh, Mantis gonna be in trouble. The aggression continuing to heat up here. Uh, Clockwork gonna be in some trouble, perhaps it looks like uh, he is gonna fall. The person who you're I still can't get Merlini on Skype. Something. This is really weird. This is really weird, guys. I'm so sorry. So, um, yeah, I, I, I can see Merlini in the client. You know what? Let me, let me unmute myself in the client or unmute him and see if we can hear him. And there are dewarding rows right now, so Flipside does have that open <laughs> to them good. in case they want to go out. Hey Ben, can you hear me? And he has his sound off. Looks like he's coming back online. Hold on a second, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's still not picking up right now. Um, Rana's still looking the person whom you're trying to reach <laughs> is currently Skype unavailable. Skype is totally ruined. We're both trying to call each other. As you treads, Manta style as well as Midas, there is an invis coming out. Puck almost... Gets caught out Minas. Sorry, I am trying to... Okay. Hello? Can you hear me? Ben, Merlini, check, check. Okay, there you go. Can you hear me in the client now? Now I can't hear you if you're if you're talking. Oh no, I think we were talking at the same time in the client. The poor the poor client people. Oh no, Skype is like gone bonkers. Maybe we're just trying to call each other at the same time. The person whom you're trying oh to... Oh my god, that's so irritating. Skype is literally the worst here, so alright, we're just gonna keep casting this game and move onward. I don't know if Ben can hear me or not, but uh, the um, hookshot gonna be used there short range onto the... Source. I'm totally, I've totally lost my cadence here, folks. I'm so sorry. Freezing Field gonna come out. Looks like a Halu gonna be able to run away. And we still got a pretty even game on our hands, despite missing a good Dyer's bit of the action here. Tower is under attack. Uh, I don't want to talk in spectator chat. It's so irritating. So, uh-oh, Mantis going to come around the backside. He's going to be in a bit of a sticky situation. Dream Coil actually going to come out as well. Visage uh, going to be able to finish off the Venomancer. But still looking like a pretty even exchange. There we go. Ben, can you hear me in the client? Yes. Okay, there we go. So now we're good. I don't know what happened to Skype, buddy, but at least we're, we're all good on stream and the client now. I imagine that was on my end, but uh, I, I really don't know what caused that hiccup or why Skype still isn't working. So, all right. Recap us, pal. What did we miss here while the stream was kind of dark for a minute or two? Uh, a lot of action, especially Waterfaka. He's been jumping around here and there, but the puck with Blink has just been causing a lot of problems for Next KZ. Um, Waterfaka, two and four right now. Potom's actually taken a spill quite a few times, too, so just a lot of gators here and there. Um, Lifestealer has died one time, but still doing very nice in terms of farm. And Lone Druid picking it up. Looks like he does have a 17 minute radiance, which is not bad, especially considering his start. Yeah, absolutely right. And we we're worried about how well um, his his start would go, and it seems he's he's really made a, a good recovery. Some of that is uh, the the positive team I fight effort. Can't hear you anymore. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was You're trying to. In and out. Yeah, I was trying to tweak one of the settings. It's like we're back. So yeah, the recovery for the lone druid has actually been pretty impressive here. Seventeen minutes, as you mentioned, really not so bad. And looking at the total gold graph here, actually next KZ going to take a little bit of the lead, about uh, twelve hundred gold, somewhere about two thousand experience. So this game actually turned around quite a bit. Though they're still going to have to worry about this life sealer. He's still tearing up the net worth chart, and uh, we've got another uh, well surprise inside with an invisible puck in the top lane. Though I don't think they're going to bump into anybody. Although puck, as uh, you probably mentioned, has also picked up his. Blink Dagger uh, quite quite some time ago with another 1600 gold in the bank. So the big items starting to come out. Life Stealer did go Midas first, now has an armlet to go with the Phase Boots. Radiance I think that the fl uh, the momentum is definitely with Flipside right now. Um, next case, he's trying to avoid fights right now. They need a couple of big items before they can start fighting. Like one big item on Marana, perhaps a Manta style or whatever damage Dyer's item if she's going for that. Um, maybe a BKB on the Storm Spit, and then after that they Radiance can start fighting Flipside. They can push a lot attack. faster, and it's a very smart Dyer's decision for them to try and trade because they have attack. the Lone Druid, and they're already cleaning up the T2 T2 when Flipside is just touching the T2, and this is just a 
terrible, terrible decision by Flipside right now, and they have to retreat. You cannot trade a T2 for a T3, and they know that Dyer's right now. Yep, this tier 2 in the bottom, it looks like they are going to be able to commit and finish it off, but already the tier 3 taking a good bit of damage. Some port's going to come in. They're going to drop that Bane like he's hot as soon as it starts. Uh, Book going to buy back just about right away here. No Glyph available for Flipside, so this tier 3 tower is going to take a good bit of damage down below half health. Puck is going to hop forward. Whoa, a huge Dream Coil going to connect with 4. Everyone except that Crystal Maiden. The Clockwork going to hop forward, and it will be to his death. Down he goes, and now Book may be in trouble again. He's going to take a little bit of Visage damage. What a fuck, going to hop forward here. They're going to commit to the Bane. That's a double kill right there as he did buy back. The Bear will fall, but this Life Stealer possibly in trouble. Will be able to stand his ground long enough to finish off the Storm Spirit. Aggressive leap forward for Mantis, and that'll be the end of the Life Stealer. Looking very good for next KZ right here. The Frostbite going to be used on Puck. Illusory Orb is going to be enough, at least for now. The, uh, well... Is going to survive. Arrow going to be off the mark, but wow, this tier 3 tower now going to be destined to fall, and I think this is going to be Rax here for next KZ. Dyer's bottom tower yeah, that's fallen. just a huge lapse in judgment by Flipside there. They should not have been in that situation, and you could see that coming from, like, as soon as they were pushing the T1, you know that things are going to go poorly. Firstly, the Life Stealer is inside the Puck, so they don't have the damage from um, the Life Stealer. Puck was sitting inside Invis, so they pretty much just have three heroes beating on them. It's like a Bane, a Venno, and a Clockwork. How is that going to outpush five heroes plus a Lone Druid Bear who has the Relic damage on the Bear? So that's the first lapse in judgment. Secondly, Puck did not have a TP scroll, and Bane was the one to TP in first, but Storm jumped on him, and there was an arrow coming, and if he cancels the TP, he has to run like halfway across the map, or all the way across the map, because he was sitting right here. That's like almost the maximum distance that you're going to have to run. So, Bane should have TP like maybe on the T4s or something like that, just have Puck blink in, or TP in, and then blink out, but the way that Flipside approached that was just atrocious. They lost a T3, they did get the T2 in the meantime, but that is not a trade that you want to do yeah i think you're absolutely right about that puck gonna make a nice item pick up here gonna grab the yules not an item we see enough of in my opinion but a nice utility item and um i don't know flip side not in in the worst of positions here it was definitely a bad strat call but they still have their racks up i thought next kz were absolutely going to commit to the racks right there or at least commit to perhaps one of them um any thoughts about that choice to back up was that the safe play right there for next kz and do they run the uh, risk yeah, of definitely uh, over committing equal almost died there and Wadafaka just like jumped in to get another kill and they did get the life stealer but they were just way too low after that they had already used their mech and i th i think it was the right choice it's still pretty early in the game and most heroes on uh the side of flip side are like around level 10 so we're talking about very very short respawn timers mm -hmm. and I, I think it was the right decision uh next casey they they have a better uh three core i suppose with the lone drill with the priestess of the moon with the storm spirit too so if it goes really late they should be okay and like right. my die on bottom here yep looks like we're gonna see an initiation here it was a smoke to start it off then moonlight Sh moonlight shadow gonna be used they were gonna go for the life steal but they're just gonna turn their sights onto the clockwork he's gonna fall before he even knows what hit him and this is gonna be an easy 5v4 scenario and now i think next kz may be able to press forward and put Dyer's some pressure on these racks uh attack. no buyback available for that clockwork so this could be a good situation still no glyph either no Nope, just going to go straight for the Roshan pit, and uh, probably a smart call as well. Going to grab a, a fairly early here uh, Roshan kill at the 22-minute mark. The long-range arrow going to come in to disable Rosh, and uh, we'll see where the bear goes next. Has he picked up another core item? Nope, not quite Flip yet. Side, they're coming in, though. There is an yep. infested puck, and they don't have vision right now. They need Venomous reward or an orb. There's the orb. Mm-hmm. Yep, and oh, Puck gonna go straight in. That's gonna be the blink, the infest out. That'll be the end of the Crystal Maiden to start it off, but oh, Puck gonna pay with his life. The Life Stealer may be in a little bit of trouble as well. He is gonna get entangled. He's gonna try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe, toe -to -toe with the bear, but won't be enough. Flipside gonna be in big trouble right here. Now Bane gonna get picked off as well as the Clockwork comes in. Puck did buy back. They will be able to grab themselves a kill onto the Storm Spirit. Oh, a very close port from the Venomancer right there, but he does make it out back to the base. It's gonna be a 3-for-3 uh, a three three exchange. Puck did have to buy back as well, so I guess it was a good hold from flip side they do prevent roche from getting finished off but um we'll see how it finishes off here kind of depends if this puck is going to be able to survive if puck falls a second time this could be bad news bears but uh, alas heart is going to live a haste rune up in the top he didn't get quite close enough to scout it out could have been his saving grace there perhaps but uh, just going to play around with that visage a little bit who wow look at this visage farm he's got a scepter as well as a mech already those three birds roche still under contestment though a hollow going to come around the backside lone druid desperately trying to finish it off a hollow going to be forced to use the cogs to get away and now the venomancer going to be back in the battle gale going to connect with the druid but uh oh look at all the minions doing a lot of damage here the mech on the veno is going to be used but the radiance burn may very well finish him off oh a nice nightmare veno going to get away with about 12 hit points to spare this is getting pretty epic 
Snake here around the Roche pit. Flipside may finally be the victors. They're going to move into the pit now. Lifesteal are going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Roshan. And it's going to fall. It's not going to get snatched. Lifesteal are going to be the one to grab the Aegis. Bane going to fall, as will the Venomancer. Venomancer, or pardon me, Lifesteal are going to be able to finish off the Visage in return. And the uh, Aegis is going to get burned right away. This has been a back-and-forth fight since the beginning. Super chaotic, and I don't even know who came out ahead in that. I mean, next KZ still leading the match right now, but a lot of kills coming out on both sides as the bear is going to be able to make it out. Long range arrow will get phase shift. Puck is going to survive. So let's just to recap Roshan was killed by the dire. Aegis was picked up by the dire side. It was burned in that follow up fight right there, and that's kind of uh, where they left us. Glancing at the grabs, next KZ holding on to a 5,000 gold lead, 3,000 experience leader. So Merlini thoughts after that uh, back to back engage. Uh, it was a pretty even fight, I'd say. Puck died, bought back, Lifestealer also died, but so did Priestess of the Moon and Storm of Spirit, so I guess that's even in that aspect. Equal did not die, and he is actually getting to be a pretty beastly lone druid, and they uh, killed the Storm Spirit a lot in the early mid, but just kind of forgot about Equal, and he started off 0-1, very, very poor with 1-1 one one CS that you talked about. Now 2-2-11 two, two, and 11 with a Radiance. What else does he have on his bear? I'm trying to look at his bear right now. Mm, looks like nothing else is on him. He has 1900 gold but he's gonna have his ac pretty darn soon and life sealer he is just doesn't have anything um like any support like puck goes in and then after that it's just nothing really to follow up we haven't really seen any nice hook shot uh combos to trap their team we haven't seen re any really nice grips coming out from bane and venomancer is venomancer and compare that to the visage who as you talked about medallion ag scepter and mech where in the world did he get this farm that is ridiculous <laughs> yeah i mean i expected those items to come out but just not that quickly we've seen uh this be a, re a recurring theme with uh, visage but he's number five on the net worth chart right now uh, really uh, just in the middle of the pack and being an irritant uh, with those familiars now talk to me about this life stealer build a little bit he did go uh, hand of Midas straight into armlet and then straight into desolator kind of breaking from the standard norm I guess of life stealer builds any thoughts about the early desolator here uh, I think he just could have gotten drums I mean does not bad i guess if but he he does need a little bit more survivability i think he could have gone ac or drums uh midas phase drums armlet ac i think would have probably been the best but desolator is okay they don't really have that much physical damage so the desolator only works for himself which is not that great um especially when you're in a defensive position which most of the time he is because he's sitting in a root but uh looks like they are probably going to go on him on top storm spirit is invis there is um a puck sitting behind him I don't know, they may be able to do this. They're going to use the Moonlight Shadow as well to try to find some initiation. Looks like Flipside are a bit skeptical to some trickery here as uh, they do oh, all back up. And oh no, maybe not as skeptical position. as I thought. Yeah, and Light going to be in big I'm trouble here. That'll be an easy kill. Moonlight eyes. Shadow going to come in handy once again. They, I mean, his his awareness has to uh, improve a little bit because there's like five heroes missing on the map. There's a spirit mirror pushing on the lane, but you should probably have your alarms going off in your head if you're a player in that situation. And flip side, I mean, it's not like they didn't scout, uh, they didn't sense the game coming out because the Bane and the Puck were sitting Dyer's behind them. So um, they just have to communicate a little bit better. If someone thinks that someone's fishy, you got to be like, hey, back it up, man. Think something's going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, one of the other things about this next KZ lineup Dyer's that we haven't really touched on is the combination fallen. of the Spirit Bear with the Familiars. We've seen uh, a little bit here that the two of them working in tandem quite nicely with the three Familiars and the Bear just flying around, trying to do as much harassment as possible, use that Radiance Burn in tandem with the stuns. And it hasn't been anything like game-changing, but it's just that irritant that when someone's solo farming, it's like, just know that we're watching you, kind of kind of a thing. And uh, we see the Bear <laughs> pushing the off lanes here to put constant pressure on that bottom lane of racks that are exposed. One one outer tower, uh, one outer tower remaining for flip side, and it looks like next KZ may group up and uh, try and make it. No outer towers remaining here as they do start poking away at that wow, tier two. Wow, he's in the hiding mid. inside the bane. That yeah. is why well, I and I don't know why he hide inside the bane. I, I like the Manta uh, Desolator pickup from Rana. I think the Desolator pickup on her is a lot better, mostly because she hasn't been focused. Uh, secondly, because they have a lot of physical damage to synergize with. Dyer's middle mm -hmm. tower has exactly fallen. right. And looks like we may see uh -oh. some initiation here, but oh no, Lifesteal are going to be in the front lines. He's taking a lot of damage to start things off. Puck going to go in. Mantis in big trouble here. Is going to get caught in the Fiend's grip. There is going to be a dust used, but Bane is going to be the first to fall. Dreamcoil did come out, but it doesn't matter. Next KZ just going to stand in 
in it till it expires, and they do grab themselves that tier two tower kill. So Marana gonna be Dyer's the one uh, to grab that tower, attack. and that is definitely good news for next KZ. Gonna further their lead here. Total tower count uh, is now seven to three. So uh, of course, largely in their favor. Gold lead upwards of ten thousand. Experience lead somewhere around six. Really not too bad considering that start that we keep going back to, but uh, the big item starting to come out a little bit. That Marana's farm looking scary as well. Does now have a Desolator to go with the Manta and another Mithril Hammer in the bank, so probably going to be working towards a BKB of her own. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned Clockwork picking up his BKB, but uh, looks like Lifesteal are now going to be transitioning into uh, an MKB or, well, possibly the uh, Basher there with that Javelin. Hard to tell which. I imagine it'll be the Basher because he needs some utility. Just going all raw item or damage. Yeah, yeah kind of glass cannon and Lifesteal, I guess it could work, but a little bit more risky. I think that Basher mm, going to be the safe yeah, choice. It's, it's way... It, his build is way too risky, especially with the Medallion coming out, the Desolator coming out. So he's going to be sitting at zero armor. Or actually, uh, negative armor, I believe. He's going to be sitting at, like, minus two armor after the Desolator and the Visage Familiars and the Medallion and the Bear on him. There's no way he's going to be able to survive during Rage unless they just have amazing control. But uh, Flipside doesn't actually have that much AoE lockdown. They have the Dream Coil, but that's only, like, a half a second of stun. And then... Uh, after that, they don't really have anything. So they can just focus on life steal with Medallion with Desolator and he's gonna die. Also in that last fight, they actually didn't have a Dust or a Sentry Ward and he had a very nice full duration grip on the Mirana, but nobody could focus him because they, because they couldn't see him. Mm -hmm. So flip side, they're just having like, like kind of game changing mistakes, not to first the T3 on the bottom. And then like that initiate was just really poor clockwork, hooking onto a Storm Spirit who has BKB. Hooking onto a Storm Spirit is not a good idea in the first place. You would really want to just initiate with Blink, Puck, and Fest on a weak target. Maybe, I don't even know who you Fest on at this point. Like Storm Spirit <laughs> can just BKB run away. Marana can just uh, Manta leap. If he gets silence, a visage is visage with 1600 HP mech and 34 armor with all Grave Keeper's cloak. Lone Druid is going to be sitting in the back and is pretty tanky to begin with. And I guess your only target is Crystal Maiden at this point. They had a really good window in the mid game uh, when Puck had an early blink. Mm hmm. Yeah, and unfortunately we did miss some of that momentum shift right as uh, the stream died. It sort of came back and it's like, oh my, next KZ is uh, really dominating here at this point. Um, but two other interesting items have been picked up here. Puck with a Dagon. And uh, we've seen Puck with Dagon in certain situations, but that tends to be games where a team is already so far ahead that they can afford that kind of greedy just bit of burst damage to really, um, you know, add insult to injury. Thoughts about Dagon here in this situation, given that Flipside are a good bit behind at the 30 minute mark? I think they need a sheep. What they need to do is try and defend their T3s. And if next KZ wants to split push out, which they've been doing a lot, um, you can just either kill whoever's split pushing. Even if it's, if it's the bear, you could just blink um, sheep and then just kill them with lifesteal with a basher. And they, they have a lot of firepower, but they don't have that much defensive capability. So what they need to do is just get one kill, back off, and then uh, try and outfarm them and then get to the point where lifesteal can actually survive until his second rage. But until then, they just have to turtle up inside their base. And if they go for more defensive builds or even wasting gold on a Dagon or something like that, they're just going to lose that in the mid game. And the gold graph is just going to keep extending and next case easily. Like right now, if Waterfuck is pushing on top, they just blink sheep and then they kind of stymie his farm. And then they, they have to feel scared. Next case, he doesn't really feel threatened at any point. He can just uh, BKB and um, just run away at, from like almost anything at this point. Maybe a Bane grip, but Bane doesn't have a blink. There's very small chance that he's going to be able to catch up to Wadafaka. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the other two items I wanted to mention, uh, Assault Karas is now on the bear, so Lone Druid is uh, that much more scary. It is actually on the bear himself, and, uh, in tandem with that Radiance, as well as the Phase Boots. Silence. And uh, there is now an Orchid on uh, the Storm Spirit as well. We talked about how he's going to be forced to go that BKB first, or a little bit more survivability against the Puck who had a lead, and now that he's got the Orchid, this Storm Spirit is uh, going to have a bit more utility to his name. Already, Dyer's we see Next KZ just going fortified. straight up into this bottom tier 3. Glyph going to be burned straight away. The Barracks Thank melting you. very, very quickly here a pipe did come out and they're going to start the initiation bang going to be the first to fall that's not a good way to start the flight and oh no this life steal are going to get dropped right away as well life steal are going to buy back right away but the rest of flip side just going to get completely cleaned up and light going to come in not going to be able to make it happen down he goes and that is just going to be a bit of domination right there as flip side have no option but to just tap out 
Flipside has a really good early game though. Like the first 10 minutes were really good. Puck outs the Storm Spirit. They kill them twice. They kill the Lone Druid once, but after 10 minutes, their decision making was a little bit lackluster and they kind of ran out of steam. So Flipside, I can see them being a really good team. Uh, maybe with the coaching of Mania, they can uh, take down some teams, but just need, needs a little bit of work. They definitely have the skill that, uh, what it takes to be a decent team though. Mm -hmm. Agreed, my friend. So that was game one of five. You guys got plenty more Dota coming your way today, and we'll fix out these uh, bit of production issues here in between the next match. Stay with us. Thank you for joining us here on Beyond the Summit.